Another extraordinary development are, is the extensions that you granted uh, uh, ZTE and Huawei, I, I, you know, again here with Huawei. Well, let, let me correct you. Okay. Uh, these are not extensions that make oh. life pleasant for them. Mm. These are general license extensions right. that give them a very limited ability to service existing activities mm -hmm. that were in place before May 13th right. when we put the them on the list. Could I could I share with it because I really didn't and, say it was pleasant for them. You were being disputatious, no. but I didn't use that word. I just used the word extension. Let me well, let me uh, put yeah, this up. Let me tell you what else. Wait, 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 if you would, Mr. Secretary, sure. just so that the audience knows what we're quibbling okay. about and you're correcting me on. Uh, let's put up the Huawei ban timeline. From May 15th, uh, the president uh, banned Huawei with a national security order. On May 20th, the United States granted Huawei a temporary reprieve until August. In August, the U.S. granted Huawei another 90-day reprieve, pleasant or otherwise. And on November 18th, uh, the United States government granted Huawei another 90-day license extension. So I, I stand corrected. It isn't pleasant, nor did I mean to imply that. But I stand corrected. Why are the we doing this? Why the are we doing this? The beneficiaries of the general license are mostly our rural telecoms here in the U.S. who unfortunately over the years loaded up with uh, 3G and 4G equipment. Right. right. Nothing in what we're doing helps them with 5G. Okay. And in fact, more specifically, we've had 290-something requests for specific yeah. licenses. We've now been starting to send out the 20-day intent to deny letters right. and you know, some approvals. Mr. Secretary, I'm not applying for a license. I'm just wanting to understand it and, and, and the audience to understand it. And what we don't understand, Bedrock, is the, the Attorney General of the United States says both ZTE and Huawei are national security threats. Indeed, the conduct of uh, China makes it clear that the PRC is a threat to U.S. national security. Why would we not take the template that the president has put in place uh, with those, uh, all those tariffs and the billions that come in and subsidize rural rural uh, uh, companies that need equipment and, and uh, upgrade them on more expensive and U.S. Uh, products uh, rather than continue their, uh, uh, their, their relationship with two companies that are threats against U.S. Right. national security. Well, in the fact, there are two bills pending in the Congress mm -hmm. right now to do that, to finance the replacement of the 3G and 4G equipment. Right. One calls for 700 million, one calls for a billion. I hope those bills go through very, very quickly right. because you can't well, cut chicken, it's, the local people yeah. in the rural right. communities out of television, out of, out of, out of telephones. Right, and, and, and I, I, I get that. And uh, I, I, I just think that the president has put together a great plan, a great template. Uh, with the use of tariff money when it comes to the farmers, why not uh, extend it to those rural uh, uh, telecoms and uh, uh, companies? But uh, well, we, Mr. we need an act of Congress to do that. Well, the president, it, he can do that on his own, as you well know, because he's done it with the farmers. No, Con the farmers, he used I, I, existing authority through the Commodity okay. Credit Corporation. That I invite inventiveness on the parts of every part of the administration to support the president and his template. Mr. Secretary, we're way over time, and I appreciate it. Thanks so much.